I plucked one of my eyebrows before this and like I started crying and smudged all my makeup so now I have one slightly better eyebrow so I'm sorry hi everyone today we're gonna make a box I'm gonna be making this spirited away um, bathhouse gift box it does open it's so cute I love it I guess it could be a gift box a very extravagant gift box it could just be a decoration thing I don't know use it as you will um i forgot the first step okay so the first thing you want to do is make a card template or a paper template i guess a card template for the actual size of your box so you want to draw out everything to the actual measurements that you're going to be using i can't remember how big mine is sorry i'll try and measure it and put it in the description or something draw out your box and decide where you want the break to be as in where you want the lid to join i did it between these two sections like just below the roof bit and you also want to draw on all the details you want to put on just so you can kind of figure out what kind of size they're going to want to be when you cut them out of foam board later. So then you want to take the bottom and side measurement of the box so this one and this one and cut out four pieces of foam board according to those measurements. But you cut out all of them, there should be little rectangle shapes and then you want to angle two long sides and one of the short sides and to do that you use a ruler and a retractable blade and kind of angle it and cut it along the ruler um, so it makes a kind of slanted angle. You cut those four pieces, you want to cover them in red paper on the outside and whatever paper, colour paper you want on the inside, I chose black. Outside pieces are the ones that are completely flat and the inside pieces are the ones that have the angle bit on their side. Don't cover the angle bit though, just the flat bit. I use double sided tape to stick this down because the least watery, most effective kind of adhesive thing for this. These are all the base pieces. So then you want to take the me measurement for the top piece of from your pattern and do the same thing, bottom and side measurements and just cut all those pieces out and angle the edges exactly the same but these pieces will just be a bit smaller and you want to cover these inside will be the same colour but outside cover them in blue paper before you cover it in blue paper I recommend that you draw on this grid to kind of represent the windows I just did this with a fine liner pen and ruler oh awesome so you cover the outside of this in red paper um, but cover a little bit at the top in blue because this is going to be over the windows. Cut two square pieces like this just using the length of the bottom on every side and that'll just be the base and you just angle cut all the sides on one side make two of them for the top and the bottom and cover them in whatever colour that you want as in red or black depending on if you want them to be inside or outside coloured. So then we're going to work on the windows. The windows at the top of the bottom piece you want to cut pieces of brown paper the same width as the blue paper that you put on before. I, I did this horribly. <laughs> I used a scalpel to individually cut out every single one of these tiny little windows. And do I recommend you do that? No, I don't. <laughs> this took me forever. It hurt my fingers. They don't even look as good as I thought they would. So I just maybe cut out the squares a lot bigger or even just draw them on in fine liner, I guess. To make the windows on here, it's a lot easier, and I did use a scalpel for this. I just cut out red pieces, which were the same size as these walls, and marked and cut out three little squares, um, so they would look like the windows. And then I just, uh, I think I just glued them on over the top of the blue grids. Next part is joining them all together. Because you cut angled corners, they should kind of join at a right angle. First of all, you want to glue all these side pieces together for the base and the top. I just use hot glue to join them all together um, to make a really neat little rectangle shape then just glued all around the bottom piece and put that in. They should go in pretty easily, shouldn't be too hard, um, especially with hot glue, it's quite forgiving in this case. <laughs> because I put the paper on first, um, not all of the pieces have even matched up and there were a few little bits left, so I just used some red paint to go over the bits where things weren't quite matching up and I filled in some of the gaps and it added some nice little shading to it which I think actually looks better than I thought which is quite nice to be honest. So we're going to look at the lid now for a little bit. I just want to cut four pieces of just regular card from 
you know, your Amazon packages, your cereal boxes, four pieces, a little bit smaller than these pieces here. And you wanna just glue them into the overlap, the end slightly. And this is gonna make a little lip so that it just sits. When you put them together, they just sit inside a little more securely. The main structure of the box is done, really. And the next bit I'm going to do is probably the hardest bit that I liked the least. I'm going to do these little roof bits. To make these, you want to take the length of the edge that you're working with, so this length here, and you want to cut eight foam board sticks that are that length, and the width being however long you want your little pieces to stick out by. When you cut out the foam board pieces on one side you want to angle them again like you did with all the other pieces um, because this will make them join onto the actual box a lot flatter and nicer. I'm going to take four of them and arrange them into a square. Um, they shouldn't meet each other at the corners just arrange them so they just about touch each other and then you want to draw a square all around them onto some green paper. So it's weird you should have kind of like a a square with a hole in the middle. I think this will make a lot more sense with the video to help. I do this twice so you've got one for each of the little roof sections. I cut out the middle square of the green paper in section and cut out the rest of the square leaving a lot of extra space around the markings. Then at each corner you want to fold in the corners um, just so that it's got like a little crease and you should notice that it actually kind of starts to make the trapeze shape. Use some print stick or double sided tape to glue the foam board onto the card. Once they're all glued on, you want to kind of bend them over at the edges and hot glue them down to the inside so it's a nice neat fold on the corner. Um, again, this is something that will probably make a lot more sense with the video. Carefully use hot glue to just stick them onto the box. So you see I stuck one kind of pointing down and one pointing upwards. And then just to finish it off, because I wanted to, I used some black paint to paint on some more little details onto it. Um, this took a long time. Um, you don't definitely don't have to do this, this just took forever. But um, I thought it was a nice touch. And what I've got this to do is the kind of extra bits on top. And all of these are just pieces of foam board that I've cut out, covered in paper and glued on. I'll go through them one by one. So for this front bit, I just cut two pieces of foam board in the shape of this front piece that I wanted, all in one piece, and glue them together and cover them in the red paper, making sure I cut out the door and putting some black paper behind that. Then I just kind of glued on the little details, the little um, sign here, just a bit of paper that I've written on. These two windows are drawn on a fine liner. This balcony, um, I made the exact same way that I made the roof bits here, but on a much smaller scale. And this is just a single piece of paper that I glued over the top. The same for this bit, really. Again, two pieces of foam board stuck together, covered in paper. That's cut off paper and fine layer over it to make it look like it does in the reference. This green bit, again, just another one of the little roof bits on a smaller scale and have a piece of green paper over the top. Oh also this, this is a little handle which I think is like maybe six pieces of foam board covered in paper and a bit of green paper on top. The only thing left to do now is the windows which are pretty nice and easy really. Decide how many windows you want and what size you want them to be and then cut out a few foam board pieces according to that. Remember if they go round corners like maybe this one here um, you want to cut out a smaller piece for one side of the wall and then a separate piece for this side. And on these two edges you want to do that angled cut again so that they'll go together on a nice right angle. Make sure you keep track of which pieces are meant to go together so it's easier when you start gluing stuff together. Cover each piece in light blue paper and again draw on the grids with a fine liner pen. Cover the bottom half of each piece in brown paper and the top half in green paper to represent kind of, uh, there's like a roof and a little balcony section and you can glue them straight onto the box and it should be done. Then you can just put it together and it's a little spirited away box. I love this. It looks so much better than I thought. I originally said that you could use this as a gift box but it's definitely a lot of work for a gift box. I always find boxes useful 
you know, I always want to make these things, but I want to make something actually useful. Um, so that's why I made it a box that could open instead of just like a model. I'm keeping this on my desk now and just like keeping random things in it. It's great because you can put like rulers and pencils and then put the lid in it. So it covers it and it doesn't look messy. I quite want to make some more kind of architectural box type things from movies. I thought about the Grand Budapest Hotel or something. I'll measure this and put any of the measurements that I remember into the description box. You can subscribe to me here, you can follow me on Instagram and other social media. Um, I'll put that in the description. Yeah, thank you for watching. Bye!